me Catherine and welcome back to my channel if this is your first time seeing my face hi my name's Cat Steele and I really like musicals I run a musical theater internet cult we're gonna take over Broadway and then take over the world and then take over the West End and then take over Westerberg and then we're very busy I am very busy if this is your first time seeing my face hit subscribe to join the theater cult I mean theater Thursday fam we'd love to have you as you can see today I am sporting my red scrunchie that's right we're going to be listening to the newly released UK cast recording of Heather's the Musical. This has been highly anticipated and I can't wait to finally give it a listen. Question of the day, have you listened to the Heather's UK cast recording yet? If you haven't, why not? If so, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Now, before we jump into this video, a quick disclaimer. I never tried to purposefully spoil things, but with most analysis videos, there are kind of spoilers that would naturally pop up because you're discussing the plot of the show. So I'm kind of assuming that there will be spoilers in this video. Of course, I don't know because I haven't filmed it yet. That's what I'm doing right now. That being said, with the plot of Heathers, I am assuming that there will be some sensitive topics or mention of sensitive topics in this video. Something else I would like to disclaim is that I didn't see this show. My analysis and my thoughts today are really just going to be off of the cast recording, the production photos, and some of the uh, promotional footage that has been out there. These are all just my opinions. I am not the end-all, be-all. I'm just one person. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Feel free to listen along to the music on your own. I unfortunately can't include it in the video because even though it would fall under fair use, copyright on the internet is just kind of the wild west right now. Uh, so yeah. Interesting. Okay, so it feels a little more treble heavy than I'm used to and I'm not sure if that's the mixing or the orchestration. I'm thinking it's more of the orchestration though but it, is it just me or do you feel like UK recordings tend to be a little more treble heavy? This is what nerds do in their free time. Oh yay go Carrie! I remember being like a freshman in high school and one of my only other friends who knew about internet stuff because I've always been an internet geek showing me Carrie Hope Fletcher's channel. Carrie sounds very mature like she sounds like an adult woman. She doesn't sound like a 17 year old and she doesn't really look like a 17 year old. That being said, I'm not sure that it really bothers me because it's kind of the suspension of disbelief thing. Like when you watch any kind of teen soap opera on TV and you see hot 30 year olds being like, I'm a sophomore. Sophie Isaacs McNamara reads pretty young, but aside from that, I think everyone kind of reads as an adult, which so far what I'm seeing in this recording, I'm loving that they're making it their own. They're not trying to do a carbon copy of what they did off Broadway. So I don't know how closely you guys were following Heather's when it was happening, but basically there was this controversy that went down where a bunch of Heather's fans were unnecessarily rude and just kind of cruel toward Carrie for having a curvy body type and playing Veronica. Carrie has a curvy figure and she's also a total hottie and super talented and a celebrity in her own right. Aside from being a West End performer, she is a YouTuber and an author. It was a very upsetting situation and right now hearing Duke's line, you could stand to lose a few pounds, it feels weird. It used to be kind of a character development moment and a dark joke on Heather Duke's end. It's a reference to Duke's own eating disorder and now it just kind of reads as a weird insult. I know that it's silly because obviously she's playing a character, but when I heard that line, my first thought was like, leave Carrie alone. I think that's a really interesting example of the press and the real world and social media kind of tinging the project surrounding it. Jodie Steele, my queen. And no, we're not related. I wish we were related. Jodie Steele, if you're watching this, please adopt me. Jodie's Chandler just like oozes sex and confidence and ease. And I think that's something a lot of actors don't get about popular people or mean people. She's not shouting to be heard and she's not forcing her way into the conversation because as a popular girl, she already knows that people are listening. People want her. They're coming to her. She doesn't have to reach out to them. I'm really enjoying this and I'm really enjoying the harmonies. The mix is really fun to hear because in the off-Broadway recording, you can really hear Max top harmonies really clearly. In this one, it's a little more bottom heavy and it's just unique and a different flavor, so I'm having a lot of fun. Sad boy JD. This isn't your typical Christian Slater, Ryan McCartan, hot outsider kind of JD. This is sad boy, wounded puppy dog, floppy hair, poetry JD. It's a JD for 2018, 2019. I'm calling out the sad boys. This is the kind of boy, oh my God, it's Timothy Chalamet. This is a 
Timothy Chalamet JD. I feel like he's just kind of missing the V in there. It definitely sounded like he said Erotica Sawyer, which sounds a lot like Erotica Sawyer which is now my Broadway stripper name. Yeah, the top harmonies everywhere are mixed much lower than the off-Broadway recording, and it's really nice to hear that kind of bottom. Carrie's Veronica is really unlike any other Veronica that we've seen. It's not like Barrett's, and it's definitely not Winona's. She's much less of that kind of punk rock, dry, little bit weird girl, and she's much more of a, a quirky, every girl. Something else I've, I've been noticing in this recording and I was kind of holding off on saying is that it sounds very legit in that I feel like kind of the rock and roll edge that was in the original production and in the original recording is missing here. It feels like it's been a little homogenized, a little more musical theater-y, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's it's really just down to personal preference, but it feels a lot less rock and roll and a lot more character shoes. Okay, Harmonies, I see you. I see you. Whoa! Okay, Fleming's new lines read a lot more realistic. Again, everything in this show is so much less played for laughs and more leaned into the realism. Kurt and Ram getting Heather touching me works so well. Okay, moving right along, let's listen to Your Welcome. I have not heard this song before. This is the song that replaces Blue. Okay, yeah, I don't like this. You're right. You guys are all right. <laughs> um, uh, uh, ooh, yikes. Okay, yikes. It is a massive tone shift from Blue. Blue is raunchy and still like upsetting, but it's almost a little silly. Like when you listen to Blue, Kurt and Ram are just kind of idiot buffoons. In your welcome, they're actually very legitimately like, I am frightened of them. I'm not just grossed out by them. Like, I'm nervous. Obviously, I don't condone murder, but. <laughs> That's a great sentence out of context. This song makes more sense as to why JD would want to hunt them down. Not sure how I like that in terms of JD's character development, because now it's almost like he's doing it to defend Veronica, because this song makes Kurt and Ram sound like a legitimate danger to society. Which Blue, like yes, they're skeevy and gross, but they're not really perceived as a danger. Yeah, yikes, yikes, yikes. I did not like that at all. Okay, on to another new song. And yes, I'm putting on lipstick mid video. That's how long I've been listening to this and how long I've been filming. This is Heather Duke's new solo that was added in for the Weston production. Now, even before listening to it, I'm so happy that this is included because dramatically speaking, I think we were missing a solo for Duke. So I love the verses and I love the little nod to blue reprise that's kind of in there. We gotta have that sword fight in her mouth. I can't believe I just said that on the internet. But the chorus of the song feels a little bit poppy for Duke's character and also for the circumstance. I want something a little more intense. I'm not loving the interstitial dialogue. A lot of this is different than from what's licensed and the off-Broadway recording. I feel like it doesn't add anything dramatically and it's not as funny. So I'm kind of confused why it was changed and to what benefit. Shine a Light Reprise, I am loving this mixing. I love that we're actually able to hear Duke's harmony line. I say no, this is another song that is brand new to the production. Oh, I am so in love. This is phenomenal. That is so fun and also kind of a callback to the time period. It doesn't really feel like the rest of the score, which maybe is a problem when you're writing for a musical, but I love the nod to like the 80s power ballad. My only other kind of issue with it is that it feels a bit dramatically redundant. We already have a moment of Veronica standing up to JD and going against him and saying, no, that's Dead Girl Walking reprise. I mean, maybe it would be different if I saw the show live and I saw that build happen, but just off of the cast recording, it doesn't feel like a build. It kind of feels like they just wanted to add another solo for Veronica. Kindergarten Boyfriend. This is a brilliant interpretation of this song. What a good performance. I love hearing people do amazing riffing and belting their faces off and optioning up, but to me what's more important than that is dramatically justifying that build, and this is a perfect example of when to add that build in there. Oh yes, yes please, this is phenomenal. Okay, so I just finished listening to 
the entire album. It is now dark out. Let's talk about some of my overall thoughts. As a fan of Heather's the Musical and Heather's in general and musicals in general, it was so fun to hear a new version and a new interpretation of a major production of Heather's. As I saw in the comments as I was listening to the album, everyone it will not stop talking about the accents. I didn't find it that bad. I definitely found a couple of places where I was like, oop, that's an accent. I feel like the UK cast recording is just kind of missing the edge that the off-Broadway cast had. They are two different recordings. They are not meant to be the same thing, but I think it was a massive positive that the off-Broadway cast had having that kind of punk rock feel to it. I feel like there are a myriad of reasons. <laughs> I hate myself, it's fine. I feel like there are a lot of reasons why this cast recording feels more legit. Part of it has to do with casting, like the performers themselves, their looks, their vocal quality, their tones, their ranges, their choices. Maybe it's the fact that this production has money. It's not the scrappy, dark, up-and-coming underdog. It's Heathers. And that's my other thought, is that it's become too mainstream to be alternative. Because I remember when Heather's the Musical first came out, I even remember before that when it was still being workshopped and I had come upon some of those videos. I remember being like a little scandalized and a little embarrassed with how saucy and how dirty Heather's was. And now like everyone loves Heather's and knows Heather's. Heather's has kind of become like the new popular middle school musical, which is fine. I have a whole video talking about how basic musicals are totally fine and you know, we need to stop condemning them. But in becoming that kind of mainstream show, Heather's has lost its edginess. There were a lot of things about this recording that I really liked, and there are some things that I didn't really love. I'm curious to hear your thoughts about it in the comments below. If you liked this video or found it interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out and I'd really appreciate it. If you're new here, hit subscribe. We'd love to have you. I put out new videos on every Theater Thursday, plus I also do more videos on my second channel, Party at Cats, which you should totally check out too. I hope you guys are having a great day. I love you so, so much. Break a leg and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.